And really, in ocean ethnography, we've not had huge amounts of, of huge volumes of data in the, until recent years where things like the Argo float and uh, models and um, gliders and things have really expanded and, and the volumes of data have really grown. But, um, well, we'll, we'll consider um, what the basic concepts of big data are. And then one of the aspects of big data that um, I'm particularly interested in uh, in my work here at the Marine Institute is to do with streaming data and uh, real time and live data. And then um, we'll talk through some of the ideas that, that, that are evolving around the latest developments in connecting the world of linked data with, with big data. So um, big data is often categorized as, as being high volume, so uh, petabytes of data. Now, quite often, as marine research data managers, we will be more in this kind of terabyte scale or even gigabyte scale. And data sets can be as small as megabytes or even uh, even smaller, depending on, on what's been collected. So really, a lot of, uh, unless you're dealing with models consistently and global climate models, you're not really in the petabyte scale. So the data volume aspect of big data is quite often less relevant than the variety of data that we have and particularly if we're involved in real-time data management, then the velocity of the data, the speed at which we need to do things uh, uh, with it. Um, and that's where, that's where these ideas of streaming data come from. And really, I think one of the things that, that we've been addressing in linked data and the semantic web is connecting together a large variety of data that have been collected from research cruises and from deployments of, uh, of instruments in the, in the ocean. Um, and we're going to just have a little look at this velocity aspect now for a few minutes as well. So um, you, you may have, you may have uh, spent some time doing, doing text processing, and if you have, then you might recognize this tool, but it doesn't, doesn't really matter. The idea that we're talking about here is you've got one, one input of data, then you've got a tool, and, and this awk tool is just very good at processing text data, okay? And then it puts it out again onto uh, standard in and standard out on the console line in, in uh, Unix or DOS. And then one of the things that, that is coming more and more, some of you in the room may use uh, LinkedIn, okay? And LinkedIn, um, the, the web company, um, developed a way of taking, instead of using a command line for, for setting off um, input into jobs, they developed this piece of software called Kafka. And it's particularly useful because it holds messages for a long time. And you can add lots of different processes to one queue or one topic. And you can subscribe a process to the topic. And then you can put um, processed data back out again. So really what we're doing is we're taking our data and we're running it through a function. And then we've got the data over here as a, as a function F data. Now, interestingly, one of the things here is that we can reprocess this at any time because the, the queue holds the messages for a very long time. So um, what we're not doing is we're not, we're not degrading the data in any way. We're not, we're not really altering it because we could write out from here um, an archive of the data. So um, this, this is just showing that the idea is that you can st string lots of different things together and you'll eventually and um, by stringing lots of different functions together, you, you eventually get the output that you want. And why I got particularly interested in, in this is that um, over the summer, uh, the Marine Institute deployed a new um, underwater observatory um, just outside uh, our offices in, in the bay here in, in Galway and Ireland. And, um, you know, we've got, it's only in 25 meters of water depth, so it's not particularly deep, so the divers have gone down and, uh, and, and worked on it. But we, we're taking the data 
from the, the instruments. And we're, we are required to get those data back out in real time because the, observ the purpose of the observatory is to um, work alongside a test site for ocean energy devices. And the engineers who are deploying the ocean energy devices need to uh, analyze the, the data that uh, to do with the environment as well as to do with their instruments in real time. So, um, so here, here we have um, a CTD on the, which is representative of, of one of the instruments on the observatory system underwater in Galway. And we've been able to uh, take the, the data from that CTD and put it onto one of those message queues that we were describing. And this all happens within the, within the um, shore station for the um, observatory. And then there's a, um, uh, an internet connection back to the Marine Institute headquarters and we've got a message queue on them showing you that you can you can kind of do multiple things with one lot of messages here. So we can we can uh, write out to our storage area, and then we can use a piece of software from NOAA called ERDAP to uh, publish the data online, and people can uh, go through there to uh, drop graphs and things of the data. But we can also go do some processing in a in a piece of software and put on a build a new message queue, and then we can subscribe our website to that message queue. So um, this isn't linked data yet because there is no RDF in it. It's online, I suppose, so it is, it is low quality linked data. But we, we have all of the data coming through, um, and this is a, a dashboard um, showing that we're receiving the data. You can see the graphs here. and. Um, you know, you can you can watch a video of the fish under the water, but there's no none of that is done in a way that any research data manager would recognise as a standard. So um, one of the one of the things that I've been looking at uh, is how do we take these new technologies for pulling streaming data, which is obviously going to be a, a more and more important issue. Uh, and apply some of the standards and some of the the, um, the standards from the Open Geospatial Consortium that are, are important to our domain, some of the linked data standards, uh, and get something back. Now, this is all kind of work in progress, so I only have uh, one more slide to show you on this. But, um, and I apologize again, I think it's a bit difficult to see. But um, we've built a uh, sensor observation service around the um, around the, the observatory and the data streams from the observatory. And um, if you if you look at the slides later, you'll be able to see that there's a, a unique ID here using a web address for this particular observation. Okay, so it's it has its own address that you'd be able to get back to and you can identify this particular observation uniquely. And then um, it's got a, a particular geographic feature of interest, and that has a URI as well. So now we have linked data, and there's some streaming going on uh, to feed the actual numbers that are coming out here. So there's a value down here of 72, okay? And that's... Um, that's just to do with the uh, to what to do with probably the uh, turbidity of the of the water or something. Oh, the chlorophyll count in the water. Okay. So um, what we're doing is we, we're we're wrapping some new services around that streaming data to generate linked data in in close to real time and. And really, I just wanted to show you that there's, there's still a lot of work going on here, and, and this is really one of the next steps to, to be done in, in linked data, is how we can, uh, how we can link together observations, uh, how we can link together actual data, because a lot of the, the um, examples that I showed you earlier were to do with metadata, 
and not to do with the, with with data values themselves. And that's where a lot of research and work is ongoing in this field. And really, I wanted to uh, I wanted to leave you again just with this this quote from John Delaney, um, because you might you know you can you can uh, you can go away from from this talk and you can think about what the areas. Um, are around oceanography that that excite you and interest you. I, I'm interested in in computing, so I've been looking a lot in the computing area, and incorporating some of the ideas from there into my oceanographic data management. But there may be other areas that that, that you're interested in that you can look to. Maybe health informatics. There's there's lots there, um, and maybe there's new ideas and, and fresh ideas that that you could take from looking at, at those areas. Um, and you can uh, you can lead the way in, in incorporating those into oceanography and making it something even more magical. So um, yeah, I'm going to leave it there, and I think we'll we will try and answer any questions. I think we can. Thank you.